I was thinking and I heard somebody, then this is a Christian they're talking to and telling them whatever is up to them is a generational curse. And some of you believe the same rubbish. God said if he set you free, you are free. You understand the idea? So you got to understand when the people are doing their thing, they don't want to take responsibility for their actions. They tell you it's the devil caused me to do it. They tell you it's my husband caused me to do it. It's my wife causing me to do it. You're lying. It's you who want to do it. God gave you a choice. Are you hearing me? So my father had a whole lot of women. You see me walking a whole lot of women. No, I already made a choice that it will never happen to me. Are you understanding that? Because I understand the pain it causes in when I was a kid. So don't tell me about generational curse. If I were a sinner and you come to me and tell me that, I probably would like you to believe you. But I am free. Praise the Lord, I am free. No longer bound, no chains holding me. And whatever my father did, that's his business. But what I do is God's business. And God is able to deliver me. And so I am not in chains. If you believe in generational curse, you are in what? Bondage. Take responsibility for your action. Don't blame whoever your parents are, anybody else. Take responsibility for your action. If Jesus set you free, the Bible tells you you are free indeed. Then how you are a Christian and you have a generational curse on you. Them idiots come to you and preach and them say they are prophets and whatever they are. And they are trying to break curse off you. Well, are you saved or are you are not saved? Father is a drunkard, they drink rum. And then you grow up not having enough sense, start drinking it too. You become a Christian, but you can't let it go because you think, and they tell you, it's a generational curse. Are you so stupid you believe them? You know, generational curse, nothing. It just simply means you don't take responsibility for your actions. Praise be the Lord. The devil can't get in your body to do nothing. The devil only can tempt you, influence you. You are the one who make a choice. You either go towards Jesus or you go towards the devil. There are, there's no two way. Praise the Lord, somebody. Are you understanding that if you're children of God, then God expects you to take responsibility for your own action. Don't tell anyone that it's a woman caused me to do it like Adam. You got to understand, you are a man of God. You are a woman of God. Take responsibility for your life. Remember this morning we said, everything you do, if you're following God, it must be intentional. That means you make up your mind, you're going to do what God said. Thank you, Jesus. So he tells you this, that all scripture is given, what, by the inspiration of God. God breathed. Men just write it, God breathed it, and they write it. It tells you that it is for what? Correction. It is profitable. You see that? For doctrine. It is profitable for reproof. It is profitable for correction. In other words, then, Everything that God wants you to do is in the scripture because it is also profitable for instruction. Praise the Lord, somebody. That means if you're walking according to the scripture, don't tell me you have generational curse on you. So Christians comes up with all kind of stupidness. Sometimes you got to wonder and you hear them on TV talking all this kind of stuff. And some of you just actually just believe them. Well, I tell you this, my God... There's no limitation with my God. Are you understanding that? When he said he saved me, I am saved. When he said he set me free, I am set free. When he said that I will always be with you, he's with me. Are you understanding that? When he said I will lift you up, he will raise me up. Oh God, hallelujah somebody. And you got to understand then that if he said all of this, then all he said, you triumph always in Jesus Christ. Now how come they're telling you you're on some, some curse? That means the work wasn't done. The Bible said he finished the work. Praise the Lord, somebody. Glory to God. So Jesus met some Jews talking to them. Hallelujah. I'm in St. John chapter 8. And he's talking to them. Are you in chapter 8? I'm going to wait until you find it. Verse 30. And he spake these words 
as he spake these words, many believed on him. Note that. Because Christians are like this. When you tell them things that make them feel good, they, they, they're ready to jump and they're ready to believe. But when you tell them what God said is the truth, then they turn against you same time. Some of them. Are you understanding that? So they believe him. Then he said to them, and follow me closely, 31. So I'm talking, I tell you about holiness. See that? Some of you didn't like what I say, but you got to go home and cry for yourself because I'm not going to be crying for you. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Notice the word again. If you continue in my word, then are ye my what? Disciples indeed. So you cannot be a disciple of Jesus if you do not continue in his word. Are you seeing that? If you continue in his word, that means you obey his word. That means you do the things that are in the word. Then he said, you are my what? Disciples. Take a good look at it again. Are you seeing that? He didn't say, you will be my disciples. He said, you are my disciples. So the very fact that you practice the word of God in faith, believe in what God said, you will become what? A disciple by the actions that you have taken and by the decisions that you make. You will be his disciples. So he said then, if that is the case, you are my disciple. Factor that in your mind. Thank you, Jesus. Now, listen what they said. Jesus said to them, So if you are my disciples indeed, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Are you hearing that? If you are my disciples indeed, and you are following my word, then you will know the truth. So when you just come to Christ, you don't really know everything. And sometimes you don't know what is so true and what is not. But guess what he said? If you continue in my word, you are my disciple. And you will know the truth. And the truth will what? Make you free. In other words, when you come in contact with the word of God and begin to read it, begin to follow it, then you got to see then all of a sudden the shackles are start what? Falling away. All things that you never thought God would work out, they all start to work out. He puts a prayer in you that you never heard even your own mind saying that yet. And God just break the chains because you are now what? His disciple and he has set you free. In other words, he has released you from all bondage, all curse, everything he has released you from. So some of you, you want everybody laying hands on you. And you want this happen to you and that happen to you. The greatest thing for you is to just believe what God said. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise ye the Lord. You can't always wait for nobody to lay hands on you. Glory to God. I love a good challenge, so when the devil come my way, I love the challenge. I don't mind. I'll say, come, devil, come. You think you're going to put me down? Think again. See, and I'm not boasting. I'm telling you what I believe. Are you understanding that? Because the Bible tells me one thing. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And you've got to understand this. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up in judgment against me, I condemn in the name of the Lord. And you've got to understand then, when God said, I'm your light, your salvation, he said you don't need to fear anyone. No matter how it comes to you, you don't have to fear like I said, if I'm going down, I'm going down with Jesus. And that's all there is to it. So he tells you then, you would be his disciple if you what? Hello? If you what? Walk in his word. You'll come to know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now listen to this. And they answered him, we are Abraham's seed, and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou then he shall make you or he shall be made free. See that they're lying. They were in bondage to the Babylonians. They were in bondage for a while to the Assyrians. They were in bondage to the Romans. Are you understand what I'm saying? So they're lying. So guess what they said? We're Abraham's seed. 
There's some of you, you said that you're Pentecostal, you belong to SDJs, evangelistic churches, and all of that, and you believe that because you believe all of that, it means that you're all right. No, you're not. Praise the Lord, somebody. It's walking with God that is going to make you all right. It's believing what God said. It's not who you hook up with. Even if you hook up with a prophet, I tell you this, if you're not walking with God, it's of no use to you. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. You got to get to know God for yourself. You got to get to understand God for yourself. Because if everybody's telling you who God is, when are you going to know for yourself who God is? Are you hearing me? So when I, I'm sick, I know who God is. When things are not going the right way, I I know who God is. I know how to pray. I know to call on his name. Hallelujah, somebody. And he comes to deliver me. Are you understanding that? Because I am intent in my what? Way of walking with God. Praise he the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. So understand them. They say we are Abraham's seed. Some people like to talk about their heritage. And they like to tell you I met a man up in uh, Alabama. Not Alabama. Georgia. And he, he asked a prayer. Glory to God. He said he, he, he's fasting out when he's driving. And so he asked a prayer. The pastor called me and asked me to help her pray for him. So we prayed for him. So I held his hand and I said, I want you to now just don't but a talk. Just believe God right now. See, I believe God. I believe God. I always believe God. Hear me? I always believe God. And he kept saying it. So I said to him, just believe God right now. I always believe God. So when we finished now, he started talking to me. And so again, to understand, he told me he went to a theological seminary and he did this and he did that and he did that. And you got to understand what I'm saying. I'm saying to myself that well, he, he, know, he knows all of that. Then how come he can't get God to touch him to heal him? Then he starts talking about his degrees. And his son and his daughter who did this and who did that. But guess what? All of that doesn't really matter. Lord of God, God sees faith. God sees a heart that wants him. God sees a heart that hunger and thirsts for him. It's not because of who you are. Glory to God. God doesn't respect no persons. God respect, have respect to those who trust him and believe him. And if they turn against God, it's the same attitude God has towards them. You got to understand God. See, glory to God. So he believed that he went to theological seminary, so I always believe God. <laughs> But I'd rather somebody pray for me and I walk home being healed. And tell about I always believe God. I am well, I believe God, you know, don't get me wrong. Because when I get sick, I know where to go. I know who to call on. Praise the Lord, somebody. But they think that their heritage is important. So they are now telling Jesus as if he didn't come from Abraham too. We are Abraham's seed. They choose the right word. Jesus set them up quite well here. Listen to what he says. They said we were never in bondage to anybody. Yeah, some people come to the gospel of Jesus sometimes. They were in bondage where they were. A lot of time we pray for folks, a whole lot of folks. They leave here and go back to the same bondage they were in before. Are you understanding that? I remember a lady came here, and when she realized that her husband was going to leave her boy, she came and she said, please pray for me. Pray for me. She didn't want him to go. And you got to see, he went. See, and she cried. She came to church, cried. Oh, one Tuesday she walked in here, and she was all broken. And we pray with her, and her husband came back home. She never come to church again. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Some people are just like that. You got to see, when they need God, they come to church and they cry. See, how some of you, you want preachers to break off their knees for you, and you just never pray for yourself. You got to see, God wants to personally interact with you. 
when you have a pain, he wants to heal you. He wants you to personally call on him. He wants you to personally draw near to him. It's not about the preacher. The preacher only encourages your faith and help you to trust God. But God wants you. He wants you. And he wants you. He wants you to what? Come close to him. That's what he wants. So Jesus said to them, listen what he said. They answered, we are Abraham's seed, right? And we were never in bondage to any man. And he said, and they said, what do you mean by you saying that we are going to be made free? What on earth do you mean? We're always free. So he said to them. And when Jesus uses verily, verily, it's like, an, it's like you're taking an oath. It means I most, sli I most solemnly tell you, it is irrevocable. It cannot be retracted. It can't be changed. Hallelujah, somebody. And so he said to them, glory to God, what he's going to say to them, it can't be taken back now. So he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. And if you are the servant of sin, you are a servant of the devil himself. So they say, you don't understand my position. You don't know what I'm going through. You know them Americans that love that kind of stuff. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know my story. I don't need to know your story. <laughs> what I need to know your story for, I know one story. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Call upon the Lord and he will deliver you. Praise ye the Lord. That's the story I need to know. Glory to God. You were down in the gutter. Thank God he raised you up. Why should I sing a song about my gutter? I want to sing one of praise. Where God lift me up out of where I was. You understand what I'm saying? Now listen what he said here. And the servant abided where? Hello, read it again. And the servant abided not in the house forever. So that's why some people are in church right now, but they're not going to be there forever when the kingdom comes. See? Not everybody will say, Lord, 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 shall what? Enter the kingdom. They're just only here for a while. But he said, the son abided forever. Somebody give the Lord praise. He was talking about himself, but I am a son of God. If you are a son of God, then you will abide forever in his house. Praise be to Almighty God. Are you hearing me? If you are a son of God, you will abide forever in his house. I don't have to put my head down to the ground to tell you that. See, because he said, as he is, so will I be. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Now, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be what? Free indeed. You know, General Jim Cartier. Take responsibility for your actions. Stop blaming your poor parents. They have nothing to do with you. They, 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 Jesus saved you now. Are you understanding that? All you got to do is come to the point and recognize when you are in sin or not practicing what, what God said. And all you got to do is come and say, Jesus, I repent of my sins, Lord. Give me the strength to overcome. And that's all Jesus needs to hear. Thank you, Jesus. Clap your hands, somebody. And bless the name of the Lord. See, so some people choose not to walk holy. And that's why they have so many excuses. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus said, I know that he are Abraham's seed. But he seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. If I speak that which I have seen with my father, and he do that which is of seen by your father. See that? Now listen. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is... And they weren't including... Get the idea? And they're going to tell him why. They're not including him. They say Abraham is our father. Thank you, Jesus. You got to see the Christians sometimes. They tell you, I go to this church. 
and my pastor is Bishop so-and-so. And if you know long we have been around, as if that would have saved us. And the ones who like to use them words by vicarious, and when they're preaching, they say, the anthropomorphistic attribute of God. And all of that, they will tell you, I have been to here, and I have been to there, and I am a priest, and I am a this, and I am a that, that can heal you. Praise the Lord, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. So some minister, when they are talking to you, I can already tell what, where they come from, what denomination they belong to. <laughs> Because they talk a particular way, some of them assume a holy presence when they are on the pulpit. And you'd never believe that's the person you were just talking to down the road. <laughs> As if that can save you. Glory to God. Praise be the Lord. So you got a seed and they're telling Jesus we are Abraham's what? Seed. Hello. So now... They answered and said, we are Abraham's, Abraham's our father, right? Jesus said unto them, if he were Abraham's children, he would have what? Done the works of Abraham. Notice now, he switched from what? Seed to children. See that? In other words, then they are natural what? Descendants of Abraham, but they are not seed of Abraham. Praise the Lord, somebody. Children, they mean they obey God like Abraham. Seed mean only from the lineage. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So it's not my father who is anything. You understand what I'm saying? And you got to see then that Jesus is what? My God and what? All I got to do is walk with him. And it doesn't matter if I what? Came from what? Being a Gentile. And them Jews who see you and think that you are a Gentile still, they don't realize that God has already chosen you and you are no longer a what? Gentile. They don't have to accept you, but you are not no longer a Gentile. Thank you, Jesus. So if you're not a Gentile, then you've got to walk with God as a holy son of God. See that? So Jesus now said to them, I'm in verse 40, but now he seek to what? Kill me as a man that had told you what? The truth. See that? Which I have what? Heard of God. Did this Abraham did not do? You following that? So that's how Christians are sometimes, you know. And I said, in inverted commas, the real Christian will listen to God. The others now, they get vexed when you tell them the truth. They go home and they're already punching the walls. They're already cursing the preacher and cursing his family and cursing everything in his house. Because they heard what? The truth and they get vexed. Are you understanding that? So you got to see these folks. Now, notice they say, the Bible said they believe in Jesus now. Notice that's what the Bible tells you, right? And now Jesus is telling them what? The real deal. Now listen what he said. He said, you do the deeds of your father. They said unto him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God, that's almost throwing back at him to say he was born of fornication. Notice they say, we are Abraham's seed, and they're trying to tell him that he was born of fornication, knowing that his father wasn't really a man, or they would believe that his mother committed what? Fornication, and that's why they had him. See that? The man tell them the truth. Get it? So, like me, say the truth. Some people, they would probably say, you... I know when you used to do this. I know when you used to do that. And who are you talking to now? Huh? Who are you talking to now? You think you can talk to me? See, they, the Bible said they believe him. But when they start hearing the word now, they turn against him. Glory to God. Praise the Lord, somebody. Now listen, Jesus. If God be your father, he would have what? Love me. For I proceeded what? From the Father, or from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. So Jesus asked them a simple question. Why don't you understand what I'm telling you? Why can't you understand? Then he said, He are of your father, the devil. 
and the lust of your father he will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. That's what you got to understand about the devil. Death does, does, doesn't like any of you. When he sees you, he sees God. Doesn't like you. He's a murderer from the beginning. Why would you want to follow him? All He's going to lead you down the path of death. Lead you to the path of destruction. And Satan will make it all look nice and dandy until you're near the end. Then he start laughing at you and he start laughing at God. That's what he does. Praise the Lord, somebody. See, when Jesus was dying, they all started, all Satan's what? People started laughing. They mocked him and all of that. But when he came back from the grave now, all them devils, including Satan himself, they tremble in their boots. Praise the Lord. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. That's why the Bible tells you, if God be for you, man, some of you Christians only say that, but you don't believe nothing. You go down places and when people rise up against you, you, you start crying, I wonder why all this happening to me. When all you got to do is say, is God be against me, you can say all that, God be for me, you can say all that you want to say. See, you don't want to give it to me. If God said you have to give it to me, you could resist all you want. Sooner or later, it's going to be mine. Praise the Lord, somebody. But you got to believe God when you're talking, all that kind of stuff. Thank you, Jesus. So now, he said to them, Satan is a murderer from the beginning. So the latter part, he said, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he's a liar and the father of lies. And because I tell you the truth, he believe me not. So he asked them the question, which of you can convince me of sin? They couldn't say he's a sinner, but they still didn't believe him. Are you understand what I'm saying? So guess what happened? It went down to the point where he's telling them about he has seen Abraham. Abraham saw him. And when, when all of that was over and done, they asked him the question, you're not even 50 years old yet and you see Abraham? And they were all mad. And when he said, before Abraham was, I am stones draw already to stone him. See, he claimed to be the God of Israel. You understand what I'm saying? Now, that's the people who said they believed in him. And now they draw stones to what? Stone him. See, so I preach the word of God. And it doesn't matter how much people say and they praise and they say all kind of stuff in terms of, oh, that was good and all that. Believe me, that doesn't move me. Because I know in the same breath as I tell you this, in the same breath you will turn just around. Some of you will turn around. Are you understanding that? Good, so I give all glory to God. So when they turn around, they turn around against God. They didn't turn against me. That's his word here. I'm just a messenger. Praise the Lord. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Give him glory, someone. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, so understand then, it's not about your heritage. It's not about your grandfather who was this or your grandmother who was that. It's not about all of that. God wants you to take personal responsibility for your holiness, for your walk with him. He wants you to take personal responsibility for his name. It must never be what? Common. He wants you to take personal res responsibility for yourself because you must never be common. You must be an uncommon individual. That's why he said you're a holy nation. You're of a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. Are you understanding that? That means you are not like everybody else because you are what? Set apart by Almighty God. That's why the whole word holiness means that when God said you are holy, and when he called you a saint, he calls you a holy one, one who is set apart for him and him alone. See, so when God sets you apart then, you can't behave like the world. Don't have time to go in the rest, but next time when I see you, God spared my life, and we get into all some other stuff. Praise the Lord, somebody. I am on a quest for holiness. And the more I see what churches are doing, the more I have to warn you. Because when Jesus comes, he's coming for a church that is without spot and without wrinkle. Praise the Lord, somebody. Are you hearing me? He's coming for a church. He's coming for a people. He's coming for a holy people. And in the book of Hebrews, it tells you, without holiness and peace, 
get it? You can't see God. So if you don't make up your mind to walk holy, then don't make up your mind to meet Jesus because you're not going to meet him. Praise ye the Lord, somebody. Stand to your feet and give the Lord praise. Give him glory, somebody. Give him praise. Give him glory again. Give him praise. Give him glory, somebody. Give him praise. Give him glory. Magnify his name. Lift him up. You're a saint of the most high. Hallelujah. Walk like a saint. Behave like a saint. Speak like a saint. Praise ye the Lord. Stand up like a saint. Hallelujah. Because he has called you to holiness. He has called you to righteousness. Hallelujah, somebody. Got to believe the Lord. Because he has called you to believe in him. To trust him. Hallelujah. And he said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. It's not what man said. It's what God said. How you hear me, somebody? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, oh Jesus. God is looking for uncommon people. Looking for someone who dare to trust him. Consecrate themselves to him. Because God still wants to do miracles. He still wants to do signs and wonders. But God is looking for a holy people. God is looking for a righteous people. God is looking for someone who would dare to believe him. And the Bible tells you he will do much more than you could have asked. But he's looking for someone Hallelujah. to believe him. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, my soul. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to believe with me right now. Stop thinking of yourself as whatever you may think. See yourself as God sees you. Believe him. Oh, glory to God. And as the sister said, we're sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. God wants to work through you. Wants to do mighty things through us. That people will see who he really is. But God wants us to come closer to him. Praise ye the Lord. He wants us to draw closer to him in prayer. Glory to God. In fasting. In holiness. In righteousness. In consecration to him. He wants us to come to that place. Glory to God. That you wouldn't have to call too hard. All you got to do is just believe. And God will just turn up right there for you. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. Oh, hallelujah. Can't be when you want to touch God. You have to do so much crying all the time. When you're walking with God, he said, when you call, I will answer. And before you finish the sentence, I will say, here I am. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is still saying the same thing. Here I am. Here I am. Here. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus. said when you seek me with all your heart you will find me glory to God Hallelujah. and you wouldn't have to spend some time crying at an altar crying in your home crying 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 Hallelujah. he will just turn up Thank you, Holy and even when you didn't ask he comes just to say Oh, glory to God because you're connected you, to Jesus. him oh hallelujah. hallelujah and he's connected to you Hallelujah. Oh, glory, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he wants you near. He wants you near. He hallelujah. wants you near. Oh, he wants you near. Hallelujah. Praise the glory, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. When you get to that place, nobody has to lay hands on you all the time. Glory to God. You'll walk with your pain, but you already know it's going. Yes, Lord. You'll walk with your sickness, but you already know you're healed. 
That's all you got to say. I'm healed. I thank you, Lord, that I'm healed. You want me saying, God, I feel sick. I feel like I'm over. Oh, my God, I feel like I am going down, Lord. You say, thank you, Lord, that I'm healed. Thank you, Lord, I'm delivered. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You say, thank you, Lord. It's all working out for my good. Praise ye the Lord. That's all God wants to see. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 He tells you I triumph. Hallelujah. hallelujah. He said you triumph always. Well, you are triumph always. Glory to God. So I want us to pray now. You're going to pray. Pray and believe right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Father, we thank you right now. We praise you right now. We believe your word right now. For this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Yes, Lord God of hosts. Your word declares, Almighty God, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, they shall not be moved. Your word declares, Almighty God, call unto me and I will answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So, Father, we pray you lift up your people. You will strengthen them. Your hands will be mighty with them. Draw them near to you because you said, Lord, if we draw near to you, you will draw near to us. We rebuke the works of darkness now in the mighty name of Jesus. We overthrow, Lord, his plan. We render him powerless in the name of Jesus. Now, God, let your spirit arise mightily in us that we will conquer, we'll overcome, Lord, as it is written in your word. That when we call, you will answer. Before we finish the statement, Lord, you will say, here I am. Glory to God. And so we give you praise. So we give you thanks. Minister now to every heart. Touch every individual now. Mighty God, turn them away, Lord, from the concept of a generational curse. Let them acknowledge that they are free. And you have set them free, Lord God. And they are free indeed. It is written in your word that you are free, that you set them free, and they are free indeed. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so now, Lord, minister to each of them. Break yokes. Break the chains. Break, mighty God, the power of negative influence, Lord. And let them walk in your presence as you touch them now. Yes, Lord. Call somebody to believe you right now. As you do a work in them, we praise you and we magnify you and we give you thanks right now in Jesus' name. Now everybody praise him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. These children are returning home. So we're going to pray for them. And what do you need to give your life to Jesus? You can do it now too if you're ready. You're smiling. You want to give your heart to Jesus? Yeah, you said yes. Hey, Brother Mark, you come stand with them. They are here. What about you? You thinking about it or you want to give your life to Jesus? Pardon me? Wow, that's a whole lot of thinking. God, rather you just say, yes, I will. Because <laughs> when he's finished with you, then you will know that he's God. See, all I have to do is trust him. That's all he's really saying. How about you?
Father, I pray for them right now that you will bless them. And that, Almighty God, as you take them back to St. Vincent, take them back safely, Lord, on the plane. Be the pilot, O Lord God of hosts. Hallelujah. That they will arrive home safely, Lord. We pray for their mother, Lord God of hosts, that you will touch her heart, that she will be saved. We lift up Brother Mac here that you will continue, Lord, to give him strength. As he, Almighty oh, God, bring them here, Jesus, to have fellowship with them and to express his love for them. And I do pray, Lord God, that you will continue, Lord, to give him strength. Mighty God, to walk with you. And that, Almighty oh, God, yes, Lord, pray for his son and his daughter at all times that they may make it into the kingdom of God. Bless them now, we pray. Cause your mighty hands to be upon them. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Everybody, lift your hands to Jesus. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. Blessings.